get into this crypto shit. Let's see what the fuck's going on with these uh, influencer Zoomer kitties with uh, with this uh, crypto scam. Because apparently, a lot of these influencers recently got popped by FaZe Clan. Uh, some of them were on FaZe Clan. Some of them were like FaZe Clan adjacent. And uh, they were doing these scam coins. Now, for those of you who don't know what a scam coin is, like, these are altcoins. These are alternative uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, basically, that are essentially pump and dump schemes. Now, a pump and dump scheme, for those of you who don't know, is when you promote a stock, you buy a bunch of shares of the stock, you promote it, even though it's like bullshit, uh, to drive up the to drive up the uh, the price of the stock, and then you dump it and you sell it uh, when it's at its peak, and the the stock all of a sudden is devalued tremendously, and you basically used your fans uh, to uh, make more money out of them. You, you just milked your fans for money. Kind of what Elon Musk does all the time. All the Elon Sims are going to get mad at me. So basically, that's what a pump and dump scheme is. And a lot of people, since Doge blew up as a consequence of Elon literally pumping it, um, a lot of people are just trying to make money quickly. And... Uh, it's really bad overall. It's really shitty practice. It's just like you're really fucking your fans over. You're really fucking these kids over, especially if they're younger. But I guess you don't really care. But on top of that, um, this specific thing with FaZe Clan was really bad because the scam revolved around a charity. So let's take a look. Coffee... Uh, Coffeezilla, I guess, made a video about it that people like, so I'm going to take a look yeah, at it. I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of them, okay? I'm practically a connoisseur at this point, a specialist in influencer scams, if you will. So believe me when I... Why is he talking out of, like, a tube? It's wild that he has one of the best, if not the best microphone in the industry that you can use, and yet he sounds terrible. I tell you that. So today I'm going to be giving you the short version and then the full juicy story of the new allegations coming out on, quote, Save the Kids token. We already know that Save the Kids was a failed crypto pushed by some of the top influencers on YouTube. If you haven't already seen my video, it's right here. You can also watch Mudahar's video on this. We've covered this in great detail. But what no one knows is whether any of these influencers knew it was going to be a scam ahead of time. They can and have claimed plausible deniability, one of them saying, quote, I have no ill intent promoting any crypto altcoins. It was all a big mistake. Wait, what did he say? He said, and quote, I have no, I want you to know that I have no ill intent promoting any crypto altcoins. I honestly and naively thought we all had a chance to win, which just isn't the case. I didn't vet any of this with my team at FaZe and I know I should have. This no phase ill intent K. promoting any crypto okay. altcoins. It was all a big mistake. They're victims just like the other people. Today, I will be showing that this was a complete lie because I've traced some of these influencers' crypto wallets and will be revealing what they did with the crypto coins they've promoted to you and are now trying to hide the evidence now that it's all coming out. Um, again, I already described to you what a pump and dump is, but basically these guys did that to their fans knowing full well that the, ultimately the price was going to drop when they were going to start selling aggressively when it was at its peak. The intention isn't to like hold and hold permanently and get rich forever. I mean, that isn't even the intention for Dogecoin. It's like, these are, these are all just like, these are all byproducts of late stage capitalism, people having way too much fucking money uh, or, or too much disposable income uh, everybody looking for shortcuts to, to uh, you know, fast track their own wealth and, and uh, basically just doing like lottery, uh, lottery grifts, but at a much faster and much more damaging pace. Because a lottery ticket is like a dollar, or I don't know how much a lottery ticket is. I've literally never bought one because um, I don't believe in any of that shit, but because uh, uh, gambling is a sin. But, um, this is just basically like gambling.
and they know full well that it's bad, and that's precisely why they always say, like, I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm not giving you financial advice. But I am giving you financial advice. Please buy this cryptocurrency. We're going to go to the fucking moon, baby. Well, it's like, well, why are, you, why are you putting that disqualifier? Why are you putting that disclaimer? If you're, if you're getting, uh, you know, if you're also uh, being fucked over right now by this uh, big, scary company, that probably paid you money. All right, let's keep going. It will also be showing you hard proof that this Save the Kids token wasn't designed to benefit kids. I will show you in the literal code of the coin itself that it was designed from the outset with the intention to extract money from these influencers, fans, and followers. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the $10 million studio. I'm your host, CoffeeZilla, the internet detective. And wow, there's no way to make this a short story. So we're going to start this case at the beginning. A month ago, a friend of mine reached out. Why does he look like a stock trader in 1925? Like, is there a particular reason why he chooses to dress like... Uh... like that's so strange. He's just like... Someone in the chat said he looks like a, like a speakeasy bartender. You know what I mean? Like, hello, what's going on? I'm going to tell you about cryptocurrencies today. Yes, the Steve Adals are rising up. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. Out to me and told me about a failed crypto project called Save the Kids Token. That wasn't that surprising. I get tips all the time, and I just sort of shelved the project while working on my Tether investigation. So but something they had said had stuck with me. They had told me that several huge influencers were on board with this one, making it different. Face K, Face Jarvis, Face Tico, Face Nikan, Rice Gum, Summer Ray. I mean, these are some big names here, some of the biggest in the influencer world. Together, they have well over 50 million followers between them. So the fact that all these huge names are behind something it made me want to revisit it. How could they allow themselves to promote something that fell so flat? As soon as it launched, it was dead on arrival. You know, this got me interested. And it had me thinking. I had recently covered the Kim Kardashian promotion. I had seen the Floyd promote crypto. And I was starting to wonder how much money is actually involved in this stuff, right? How much are people paid to do this? I mean, I'm sure these influencers love kids as much as the next guy, but you're not gonna do a commercial like this for free. My name's Frazier. My name's Jarvis. I'm Tico. I'm Rice I'm Nikon. And I support Save the Kids Token. 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 Yo, I'm gone, so, bro. I just what I think about saving the kids, I think about rice gum and cryptocurrencies, dog. What the fuck? Face up. Oh, shit, dude. Yo, more like fuck the kids coin. Who gives a shit? You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, dude. Let's get the bag. Okay? We're getting the bag. You're catching. You're holding the bag. Okay? Fuck them kids. Coin. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Okay, let's keep going. Decided to look into it. The first thing I did was go to their post-mortem on Save the Kids uh, Hack MD article. They wrote some article basically explaining why it all failed. They said in a post, the most important thing to state here is that ambassadors of Save the Kids are not paid by us and are not given any kids tokens. Ambassadors didn't delete tweets and then dump their tokens as claimed in the Telegram as ambassadors were never given any tokens. Any of our ambassadors are involved in our project because they have bought into and believe in our mission. Ah, yeah. Isn't this, like, I don't know if I'm misremembering this, but I feel like this is not the first time that this has happened. I feel like people were even criticizing like Moist Critical for it or Moist Critical talked about it or something a while ago about, um, some cryptos uh, uh just like running charities but then it actually wasn't a charity it was like fake and it was just like a scam coin yes we'll come back to that later they believe in helping kids remember that so i'm thinking at this point hey guys uh just a quick uh, a moment to just remember um <laughs> anybody remember nfts dude remember nfts dude son you gotta do nfts bro you gotta do nfts you gotta do it dude Fucking dude, you're so stupid, dude. You fucking uh, 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 NFTs, bro. It's just like, dude, to the moon, bro. To the fucking moon. 
point, okay, they believe in their project. You're saying streamers have been scamming for years, and this isn't news, really. Yeah, I mean, I literally scam the fuck out of you. You expect content from me, and you subscribe thinking you're gonna get content, and then I literally give you nothing. Okay, I give you nothing. This is what you get, and you will like it. So. <laughs> I sub to watch YouTube videos I could do on my own. Exactly. They weren't given any kids tokens, didn't delete any tweets, so why'd the project fail? Additionally, I read about something called the anti-whale, anti-bot mechanism. This is essentially a piece of hard code that prevents large holders of a coin from selling out at once. And this piece of marketing was repeated over and over again. Anti-whale measures can't sell more than 0.1% or transfer it in 24 hours. No larger than 20% of a whale's botted wallet can be sold within 24 hours, yes. Rick Astley. And the whole idea here is to show people that this project is not gonna be a quick rug pull, which in crypto is a term for when a project gets pumped and dumped immediately on arrival and is abandoned by large investors. And in their postmortem, they say, these actual measures did indeed work as expected. It was audited by tech rate. But if everything worked as expected and these ambassadors were just in it for the kids, why did the project immediately crash? Was it an accident? I decided to investigate their telegram to learn more. And I quickly realized the actual members were telling a very different story. Members of the telegram were panicking and insisting that millions were scammed. FaZe team took the profit and left. Why would FaZe risk their reputation for this? You guys do know FaZe clan has done multiple pump and dumps, right? LMAO, there's a reason all their tweets were removed after they sold out on launch. And usually you don't have a whole host of people accusing you of scamming if there was nothing fishy going around. So I decided to do some further digging and this whole idea of ambassadors and not being given any coins turns out to maybe be why are you saying 100 these Pepela? Are they doing some fucking uh, dumb shit like this too? I don't think so. I feel like 100 Thieves, like the difference between 100 Thieves and FaZe is that they're, they're very good at cloud. They're very good at like cloud shit. But uh, they are at the very least like not so sloppy with the kind of stuff that they do. Oh, are they doing NFTs? Is that why? I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I know Kurt GD is very much against T. He, he's talked about how he doesn't want to do it. Literal thieves versus 100 thieves. <laughs> be wrong. According to the admin, they said, ambassadors bought in. We don't have their wallets. Don't know who bought or sold. Interesting, because earlier we were told they didn't sell. And then we get this news. Quote, we got confirmation from some of our ambassadors. NFTs are not anywhere near as damaging as pump and dumps. Yes, of course not. Because NFT is like a single recipient getting scammed if they, and, and half the time they know that they're like, Artwork could be devalued down the line very quickly. Still a scam. Don't get me wrong. I've been saying it since day one. But there's a reason why, like, NFTs are not considered illegal in the same way that pump and dump schemes are. And that is because one is, like, uh, uh, urging you to be a dumbass with your money and, like, buying something that you could just fucking copy-paste. <laughs> And whereas the other one is literally like, yeah, just put the house on this thing that's going to go to the moon, bro. You're going to make so much money. And it's like, tomorrow, it's all pee-pee poof gone. Like, there's a difference between something being, like, a stupid purchase and something being, like, an actually illegal scam that impacts a gigantic swath of uh, crypto traders. Feel me? Let's 
just keep going. that they would not sell anything and simply bought pre-sale to support the project. If you don't know, pre-sale is a special access to people before the token becomes publicly available on the market. Typically, you get much better rates to buy at. But again, this idea that these influencers didn't get anything from this project other than just wanting to help right? the kids seems to be a little bit disingenuous since it seems like some of them bought in but again we're reassured look they're not no. they're not going to sell right so at this point i'm thinking things are really fishy so i reach out to lucas the developer see after the failure of save the kids and everything flopped he was basically the last person still hanging around the project and at first he seemed helpless kind of like a fall guy honestly in a post a moderator explains that lucas is not the founder of this coin, even though he developed it. He says, quote, Lucas is a dev that was contracted till the 14th of June to write and set the foundation of this coin. Lucas chose to stay on and to work on this project on his own accord, whilst the others left, and he's not the owner of the coin. Fair enough. A little bit weird that we don't know who's responsible for this giant coin that's pushed by these huge celebrities, but fine. When I reached out, Lucas responded and was pretty eager to help, honestly. He had said he had been taking a break from Telegram. I said, no worries, thanks for reaching back out. I asked him, who is the true founder of Save the Kids? Because he just seems like a developer, but it seems like he would know. Was it FaZe Clan, Influencer, The Mob? Like, who's involved in this thing? I literally have no idea. He told me, I wish I could let you know, because I really don't. We kept talking, and he told me that he suspected foul play and that this was bigger than one crypto coin. My theory, a group of large money names are going around finding dev teams, finding promoters, and set- Oh no, not sure they appeared in group chat I was added to along with an Anon dude just named H. That's just, that's just a coincidence. That's not me, okay? I don't know why. It's Setting up a large hyped launch then dipping initially. He also told me the only real contact he had was to a guy named Manny and H. I asked for their contact information. He said, no clue, blocked. I got blocked by all of the team, basically. All right, so at this point, I'm pissed, right? Like, here's this poor dev who gets made to be the fall guy for a token that like wasn't his idea. He got, seems like he got hired to do it. Now it's coming on him. So I, I'm like, look, can you think of any tie to the founders? You know, it only takes one clue to find everything. And he responds. Dude, I just fucking phase up, okay? That's just all I know. I don't know why they're, I don't know why I'm getting dragged into this. Just the that letter he does H. have a clue. So I got Biden. tokenomics at gmail.com that sent me the contract who I also emailed back my PayPal for the 10K they paid me. Then all the rest was from H on Telegram. Bingo. That's all we need. Tokenomics at gmail.com. That's the clue that's going to unravel everything. I start searching the internet, right? I get the computers running 24-7. This dude has RGB on his fucking old-timey ass. Like, what is going on with this guy's set, dude? I can't focus on what he's saying. It was all clocked in, but I can't find anything. This account is a ghost. Usually there are a few threads you can pull on, nothing. So then I contact my buddy, Barely Sociable. He starts digging around and pings me back with news I couldn't have ever expected. The kid is lying. That email doesn't exist on PayPal. I used forgot password to check. According to PayPal, there is- Okay, I gotta say something. Barely Sociable. Barely Sociable does the the uh, the, the creepy pasta, right? We watched some of it. What's up with everybody doing creepy pasta that sounds like so buttery? It's like fucking corpse. Corpse apparently used to do creepy pasta as well on uh, on the YouTube's before he like blew the fuck up for, I don't know, uh, saying cat girls are sexy or whatever. And there's like a very specific creepy pasta YouTuber voice. It's like, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any massive influencers out there that are actually interested in fucking cat girls it's like what's going on hey what's up my name is Hasadabi and uh I'm here to tell you that honestly called male vocal fry I hope you guys like it it sounds like they're a pack a day smoker yeah I don't know if this is good or not. I feel like this is just like, uh, crap. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. 
There's no account associated with that tokenomics at gmail.com. That's something that I hadn't considered before. Maybe this developer, if he's a real person, maybe he's lying to me and he's actually involved in sending me on some wild goose chase. I, I don't want to let him know I'm suspicious yet. So I start asking for, you know, this contract that he seems to have signed. All of a sudden, he gets testy. He asks for a lawyer. Hmm, interesting. The next day, he makes it even more clear. He says, hey, Zilla, sorry. So my lawyer said, don't share anything for now. And also, I'm not sure I'm willing to help out much more. Since your video has been up, I've gotten a lot of death threats and somehow my family even got one. So I'm not looking to further involve myself. Sorry, hope you understand. Just as a quick caveat, I didn't mention Lucas in the video at all that he's talking about. I respond, Lucas, you need to talk, man. If you have nothing to hide, I can make sure you get fairly represented. But parts of your story aren't lining up, like this 10,000 from PayPal from tokenomics at gmail.com. I checked that email for PayPal. It doesn't exist. A couple it's kind of wild that he just like threw out a fake email that is so easily, like what is up with these people? Why is it always so easily disprovable? Like you didn't go, You didn't go one step beyond? Like, just make a fucking email account. I, it's so dumb. Also, I do find it funny that, like, he's so invested in this aesthetic that he's like, he actually does talk like a, like an old timey, uh, detective. Lucas, you need to talk, man. I want to represent you fairly, you see? But you need to stop being an unfaithful Jebediah. <laughs> we will engage in fisticuffs. If you have nothing to hide, I can make sure you get fairly represented. But parts of your story aren't lining up. Like this 10,000 from PayPal from tokenomics at gmail.com. I checked that email for PayPal. It doesn't exist. A couple hours later, he deleted his account. All these logs were saved in advance. And at this point, I'm pissed because I'm pretty sure that this kid is full of it or not telling me the whole story of what he knows and is sort of trying to back out of this thing because I never mentioned him in my video and he's sort of all of a sudden, as soon as I start asking bigger questions, he starts clamming up, talking about lawyers. And I'm still no closer to finding out the truth about what happened with Save the Kids. I mean, was it influencers? What Was it this developer? Was it th this anonymous founder, Mr. H? Like, who's behind it all? Who's responsible for this? In my first video I'd put out, I had called the coin a scam, but there's not much you can say as far as did they sell, didn't they? It sure seems like they did, but we don't know who or how much they sold. It's not so me. it feels like at every turn, I'm stonewalled. The dev isn't talking. It's Hunter Biden, dude. It's Hunter Biden. Hunter starts with an H too. Okay. I can't trace the wallets. The influencers are staying silent. Now the thing is, at this point, we kind of know these influencers got in on the pre-sale. We were told as much, but here's the thing. We know where those pre-sales went. That's one cool feature of the blockchain technology. It's public to everyone. You know, where the money was sent, what those wallets then did with those Hugo Save Chavez. the Kids tokens, exactly when they sold them, if they bought more, etc. It's all out there. The problem is we don't know whose wallets are whose. There isn't some big name on these long blockchain addresses that says like FaZe Clan or Rice Gum. It's just a bunch of random numbers and letters. And without that key information, there's no way of really telling which influencer sold what and if they were just dupes, you know? Hot Maybe chubby. they got in over their heads and simply were fooled like everyone else. Maybe they were victims, right? So we really don't <clears throat> have the full story. So for a day or two, I was just like stuck thinking about how can we prove whose wallets are whose. But then I remember something. These influencers have been deleting tweets, like a lot. Some of them deleted their support of Save the Kids project, but that's not all. They've even deleted other crypto projects that they've promoted and done giveaways. And I started to wonder, what if those projects were also scams? What if, at minimum, they were equally sketchy? What if this wasn't a one-time thing? And what if they left some incriminating evidence in one of their earlier schemes? It's worth a shot because like my other leads were drying up quick. So I just start no-lifing the archives. Tweet after deleted tweet I'm hunting through. And finally, I notice a pattern of giveaways with some of these guys. They'll say something like, this is the craziest thing I've ever done. I Dude, when this is like, this is such like a Zoomer influencer speak. 
This is the craziest thing I've ever done, guys. Fucking, oh, this is the craziest thing I've ever done. We're doing a crazy giveaway. I'll double your safe galaxy wallet. It's like, I can see the, that way of speaking. When I read that, I see the thumbnail. You know what I mean? Like, I see the thumbnail of exactly the way he's speaking. It's like, it's like, and then you have like the big font in the background, like in crazy giveaway. I'm giving away all my money in cryptocurrency. On the side. I'll double your safe Galaxy wallet. If you own a thousand, I'll give you a thousand. If you own five thousand, I'll give you five thousand. Let's see how big this gets. Max 10 winners. I will double your safe Galaxy wallet. This tweet has now been deleted, but I pulled it up in the archives. And then they pick some winners. You won. Just confirming this is the right address. Maybe you see where this is going. Bro, Joel Ram. Joel Ram 53513348. Let's go. 0% chance that that's not a bot. Here's my wallet address. This is all we need. Using this wallet, we simply cross check it at the time of giveaway, see that they got the winnings, and then check who sent it. We then check if that address has saved the kids' tokens and other tokens that these people have promoted in the past. If oh it's God, actually. That's so stupid. I forget that, like, all of this is, or, well, not just me, Every everyone frequently forgets that a part of the blockchain is that it, it's all on at all times. So once you have their, once you have their, their uh, wallet number, it's like you can trace pretty much everything that they're doing. Like everything. Always. Yeah, it's like your Reddit post history. That's what makes it safe. But yeah, but also at the same time, it's like, it's a wrap. Like you can, that's what I was talking about with like XQC talking about his like gambling stuff and saying, you know, I won 300 or 3 million off stream, whatever, da, da, da. Like you could literally see that. Like that's the thing with crypto is that someone who has the energy and time could very easily figure out what the, what the crypto uh, uh, wallet number is, and then literally find every single moment that like someone has made money on on like the the gambling uh, crypto stuff. No, they couldn't. Yes, they could. Why not? Yeah, they could. People make burner wallets for that reason. All you see is other wallet addresses, though. How is that revealing anything at all? Explain how to very easily find someone's wallet address, lol. No, it's not very easily. That's not very easily found. I mean, it's easily found if you do this. If you do, like, a giveaway or some shit, and uh, they can find exactly what your wallet... Uh, they can find, just like he did, uh, find what his, uh, what his, like, burner wallet number is. And then from his burner wallet number, he could trace it back to all of the other wallets that he potentially has by eliminating the giveaway numbers that he's uh, given away to. If he sees in his uh, history any big transfers that he's done, then there you go. You literally identified another burner wallet or potentially the main wallet that he uses. Like... Wallet address is not equal private key, dude. Phase K's wallet, it should have both safe galaxy, which he's promoting here, and save the kids tokens, which he also promotes. And it does. Okay, but the address the doesn't give you a name? No, the address doesn't give you a name, but you can trace it back to a name like he's doing right now. How do you not get it? When it eventually links up to an exchange, then some agency can get subpoena that exchange and find out who they are. Like, why are people making it seem like it's this is impossible to figure out? Kids tokens. And here's the safe galaxy tokens, which incidentally he got from the safe galaxy deployer, meaning he's not just some random person. He's clearly someone with influence. That's how these tokens do it. They give free tokens to the influencers from the deployer wallet. That's all there is to it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Oh, this meme is I just good. repeated that process for each influencer. And
Mark Cuban tweeted, I bought a bunch of this coin and people found his private wallet by matching the purchase amount plus time of sale. Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all public. You could definitely trace it back. The only, the only thing you need to know is like one transaction that they've made publicly or talked about publicly. And obviously you need to still get lucky to make sure that they're not like, uh, you know, there aren't like multiple transactions of the same size at the same times because you can just like find someone else. But um, the, the, the moment that you say like, I bought this, like here's the difference. When you say, I bought this fucking car, the way to figure out someone's like purchases on the internet that are all public is significantly more di uh, difficult than if you bought a car with Bitcoin and said, I bought this car with Bitcoin. You can literally go and figure out where that purchase is on the blockchain and then work your way from that back to someone's like potential burner wallet or uh, work your way back to from their burner wallet to their main wallet. No? And I found three confirmed wallets, Phase K, Phase Jarvis, and Phase Nikan. The others remain a mystery. But you know what this means? It means now that we have their wallet address, which is public, we just didn't know whose public wallet address was theirs. Now that we have that, we can see what they did with their Save the Kids tokens. We can check all their so-called crypto endorsements that they've been doing and find out do they actually endorse these products or do they dump them immediately on you? So before I show you what they did, just remember these guys, these influencers, leading up to this token being launched, promotional tweets are sent out, you know, a damn commercial was being made. And remember, it's all to save the kids, right? We're doing this not for money, but to save the kids. This is Faze Jarvis's wallet. He got in the pre-sale and quickly sold out two thirds of his total holdings within days of the launch. This is Faze Nikan. He immediately sold about a third of his total holdings and then seems to have held on to the rest. But by far, the really bad one was Phase K's wallet. He dumped all of his kids' tokens immediately. Within 24 hours, he went from 6.2 billion- Oh no! What? I thought he was doing it for the kids, bro. What the fuck? Tokens to four tokens now. That's right. He sold all but four tokens. But obviously, what's interesting here is that not all of these influencers acted quite the same way. You know, I guess you could say he was caught in phase four. K, am I right? Oh! God, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm feeling some type of way. I met a lot of people that said that they watched me last night, so I'm just making it as embarrassing for them as possible. So many people were like, dude, I watched the fuck out of you through the election cycle, or so many other uh, content creators on Twitch were like, dude, I love watching your murder shit. And uh, so now I'm just like making them regret ever saying that to me. Okay? I will be posting cringe for the rest of the day. Okay? I will be... You will not stop me. I will post cringe. You will not stop me. I will never stop posting cringe. Phase Nikan sold a third right away, held under the rest. Phase Jarvis sold two thirds over. The G4 a TV special was a scam and not for the kids. What the fuck is going on? No, dude, are you fucking stupid? No, they, that definitely was. That is a legitimate TV studio that was collaborating with a legitimate charity. There was no like crypto scam there. Can you imagine? Like, like a TV studio relaunching their like old property and doing it with a crypto scam. It's not fucking FaZe Clan, dude. For a few days, but FaZe K completely abandoned the project altogether. Why? Well, I think it has to do with their intentions. Look, I, I looked pretty extensively over FaZe Nikan and Jarvis's wallet history. They do not, in my opinion, have a pattern of malicious selling. What I mean by that is when they get a coin, you know, maybe they'll get some coins, sell some, buy some, and, you know, sell some more, hold on to something like a trader would. And of course, I'm not saying that promoting garbage scam coins to your fans is okay, right? It's not. Could all the crypto bros who said literally earlier that I was fucking wrong? Uh, and I don't know what I'm talking about, immediately admit that I was actually right and I somehow know more than you, even though I only have like peri a peripheral understanding of 
what uh, crypto transactions look like and the blockchain in general. Is like this guy clearly knows he's got suspenders on. He knows what the fuck he's talking about. And he's basically saying the exact same thing that I said uh, to be able to trace people's transactions on the internet. But everything they're doing, it seems like they're not premeditating to sell everything. Phase K, on the other hand, whose wallet we're looking at now, should be called Phase Rug, actually. And what I mean by that is that he not only sold Save the Kids instantly, he has a history of doing that to every project or nearly every project he gets involved in. Like take this coin right here, which is called Gamesafe.io. He got these coins, immediately sold them out, and this is the date, okay? So 31 days ago, and then you can see the sell-off was almost immediate. Or take another coin, Safe Galaxy, which he's actually promoted to his fans. Here's what I don't understand. Does this dude have like a crippling drug addiction or something? Like, like why are you doing this? You're already like a famous influencer. Just make fucking content. Like you make so much money as an influencer on the internet, okay? Way too much money. Like absolutely... Way too much fucking money. You get brand deals. You, you fucking play video games and people pay you money to play video games. And you're out here like chilling. You're like, I am going to fuck you. If you're, my, if you're a part of my community, I am going to literally fuck you. I'm going to milk you. I'm going to squeeze every last dime I can get out of you and your fucking parents' credit card. Why? Just do a fucking Raid Shadow Legends ad, dude. Like... They're trying to pay everybody, bro. What are you doing? It fucking annoys me, dude. It annoys me, okay? And it makes no sense. Are you just... Why are you trying to scam, like, for the sake of scamming people? Like, I, I don't understand it. Then why do you play ads when you have a ton of subs already? Because I have to, you fucking dingus. Why do I describe my? Why do I have to describe this every single fucking time? There's always someone in the chat who's like, "Why do you play ads?" Because I have a contractual obligation. Okay, I have a contractual obligation, and guess what? My contract ad density is literally the lowest on Twitch, with respect to every single like top streamer on this platform. I have a lower ad density than anyone else. Even Moon Moon is playing three minutes of ads now. So shut the fuck up. Okay. Ads are annoying as fuck, and I hate running them, okay? Well, I don't hate running them anymore because, hey, guess what? Um, I try to make it as fun as possible. <laughs> and the other, the other issue is, like, as soon as, I, as soon as people moved from the ad thing now, now that they realize, like, uh, as soon as people realize that, like, everyone's running ads, now they're like, well, you fucking shill... Twitch Prime, uh, and and you, uh, you know, you, you fucking tell everybody that the ads are going to be running at the top of the hour. It's like, yeah, just move over. Move, move the goalpost a little bit further, dude. Motherfuckers never talk about how I shill ad blocker and VPNs. You know, because it doesn't fit your fucking dumbass narrative. Anyway. Can you target additional ads so they only hit annoying chatters? Oh my god, that'd be so sick. Anyway. Let's keep going. He got coins from a deployer wallet once again and immediately sells them off. Now, why did he get these free tokens in the first place? Well, it was probably his promotional tweets he did about them. To get Safe Galaxy, follow this guide. Remember to tweet Safe Galaxy with your wallets. I'm in the Telegram group chatting right now. Ask me your questions there. So he's promoting this coin to his followers, telling them how great it is. Meanwhile, his actual actions within his wallet that we can see right here. Again, this is the same wallet that we saw him sell the Save the Kids off in, Eclipse. 
He's just selling everything as fast as humanly possible. Is FaZe even relevant? Said somebody, uh, Carlos Mena. Yes, dude. They literally were on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Actually, they were doing a really good rebrand recently. Like, they signed a, another football player. Like, FaZe has always been very good with uh, uh, picking up, like, celebrities and stuff like that and merging the world of esports with the world of, like, superstar celebrities. They've done a really good job, and I do respect that about them. But having said that, they just, I don't know what it is. Didn't they, didn't they like, sign fucking LeBron's son and also, like, a football player? Anyway, it doesn't matter. My point is, they, it's like, they're, they're like unable to stop doing this like dumb shit that makes them look like fucking clowns, dude. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's very strange. Like on the one hand, you have Sports Illustrated cover. Like you have so many like actual Hollywood celebrities. You have, uh, you, you are capable as an organization and you have enough, you have enough capital to basically rebrand yourself as a serious and legitimate business. But for some reason, you just literally cannot stop doing clown shit, okay? And I guess it doesn't matter because people, because parasocial relationships that you cultivate with a brand uh, will ultimately override any sort of other feelings you might have. Because like, Let's be real. Look, Bryce Gum is a known scammer. I mean, he fucking did the gamble thing a while ago, if you guys recall, where he he made it seem like if you, oh, bro, if you buy my fucking, uh, you know, uh, uh, loot boxes, bro, like, uh, yeah, bro, you fucking, you'll get like a $6,000 Balmain uh, jacket for $10, bro. It's like, and then we found out, I mean, he was just basically fucking selling gambling to children. And uh, saying that you could buy a fucking house with like a like a ten dollar loot box that you're purchasing, and you know that was that came out to be fucking bullshit, and it didn't matter. It actually didn't matter because you know he's still out here chilling fucking crypto, and uh, all it takes is like a year. Uh, of a of like a cool down period. Moon portal, same thing. What I'm trying to say is this is a pattern of deceiving his fans, pumping something, and selling it to his fans so he gets the best price. How much money did he make from it? We'll try to calculate that later. And by the way, if it feels like I'm belaboring this point, I am. Phase K has consistently deceived his audience by pushing crypto to them while having a bag of crypto given to him by these coins, I guess, for promotions and selling it immediately to them. And he'll make videos promoting these tokens like Moon Portal. Yo, Moon Portal is out right now, guys. You can swipe up and check it out. He'll also- Oi, bruv, he's fucking Moon Portal, bruv. I'll fucking shank ya. I'll fucking give you the meat shank, bruv. You fancy a fucking shanking, love? <laughs> We're going to the fucking moon, bruv. We're going to Saturn, bruv. Tweet about them like this. He said, wow, moonportal.io making the Robin Hood of crypto. Great project and great team behind it. I'm with them long term 100. Hmm, that's, that, that's interesting, really. With them long the irony here is that like this, just like every other thing under... Every other industry, every other uh, uh, institution under capitalism ultimately benefits the already wealthy and it benefits them. <laughs> it benefits them by directly scamming poor suckers who think they are also going to become wealthy with this like thing that they're signing up for that nobody else knows about, okay? Okay. This is a multi-level marketing scheme. These pump and dumps are exactly the same as like Amway, exactly the same as, as uh, uh, what's the other, Herbalife. And a lot of people engage in this. And that is, those are the pump and dump schemes that don't actually dump, basically. This is worse than that because they immediately dump it. Whereas 
Multi-level marketing schemes are supposed to operate like Doge at this point is like a multi-level marketing scheme. Uh, in the, it's a pyramid scheme in the way that like now that you're invested, you have to sell it and shill it to other people so that you can maintain uh, its growth. And basically you can say that about <laughs> virtually every uh, cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin, but at least Bitcoin now uh, can get to a point where it has like legitimacy. Uh, I don't know if it'll ever get there fully, but Ethereum and all matter of other uh, uh, cryptocurrencies operate like a multi-level marketing scheme. But much like uh, Herbalife, they could get to peak usage and, and potentially people could start using it as a legitimate cryptocurrency or a legitimate currency eventually. Hassan talking about crypto like he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I know. Um, let me let me bring uh, someone who knows what the fuck they're talking about who will say exactly the same thing. this video please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos <laughs>